Hello everybody, and welcome to another script analysis video, although this time I'm doing four scripts, all four different co-star roles that I have booked on television. It's less of a victory lap and more of a how did I break down each of these scripts, put them on tape, and then get the part. Again, it should be reminded that about 90% of a booking is just being able to look the part and uh, fit what the casting director kind of had in mind for the role. But I still think there are some technique things that we can go over and you'll just get to see kind of how the sausage gets made. Let's get into it. I highly recommend watching my how to analyze a script video first because I will assume you've kind of done that. We're getting to that point. We know each other well enough now. Also, one more thing, co-stars on TV are actually usually there for a scene or two. That is the nature of these auditions. So they vary in length. Some of them are really short. Some of them are a little bit longer, but I think it will give you an accurate, true to life feeling of what exactly the kind of roles you're gonna be going out for when you're at this phase in your career. All right, so the very first script we're gonna go over today is for my audition for a co-star booking on episode 103 of Generation, which is now streaming on HBO Max. So the first thing I do when I pick up a breakdown is I look at who's involved. For today's purposes, we're not gonna go through all of the executive producers, writers, all that other stuff, but it's always important to take a look at who's making the thing that you're going out for, just to get a idea of what kind of stuff they may have done in the past. You can look up some other people's things. Like obviously if I see Lena Dunham here, I know that she's done Girls. I know that that's a more realistic comedy, dramedy that is on HBO. And sure enough, when you get down here into the audition instructions, they actually say, our show is a grounded half hour dramedy. Keep it real. So again, you can kind of put all those things together, but it's nice when they explicitly lay that out. So now actually getting into the role. I'm going out for the role of bartender, male, 20s to 30s, the bartender at a rehearsal dinner. He gives Ariana a hard time when she tries to order a rum and coke. Co-star, please submit all ethnicities. We don't need slates, so no slate. That makes it pretty easy, one less thing. Also, actors must be SAG or SAG eligible. If not, please let us know. That's also something you might run into when you're first uh, getting into this, is there may be jobs that only allow union actors or uh, those who are of a Taft-Hartley status uh, to audition and yeah. That's just another hurdle you kind of have to jump. So let's actually get into the script. I'm just gonna read the whole thing pretty flat because I don't want to put too much of a perspective on it by, by trying to act it out too much in my first reading. Um, so anyway, we'll just go right into it. The camera passes off to Ariana who waits in line at the bar, watching Patrick and Joe on the sidelines as they awkwardly bob to the music. When it's her turn, she steps up to the bartender. Ariana. There really is nothing sadder in life than middle-aged gays who can't dance, is there? I'll take a Sprite and a rum and coke for my dad. Bartender. Grown-ups don't drink rum and coke. Ariana. My dad does. Maybe it's a gay thing. Bartender. Trust me, it's not. Anyway, it's wine and beer only. You couldn't have just said that in the first place? You know I'm just gonna go smoke weed in the bathroom right now. Bartender. Vindictive. Same. Here's your Sprite. End. So. It's a very short scene, but again, something we can give a lot of life to. All right, so with all that in mind, let's just watch the tape. There really is nothing sadder than in life than middle-aged gays who can't dance, is there? I'll take a Sprite and a rum and coke for my dad. Grown-ups don't drink rum and coke. <laughs> my dad does. Maybe it's a gay thing. Trust me, it's not. Anyway, it's wine and beer only. Ugh, you couldn't have just said that in the first place? You know I'm just gonna go smoke weed in the bathroom right now. Same. Anyway, here's your Sprite. Alrighty, so now that we've watched that, there are a couple key takeaways that I think uh, stand out to me. First of all, I turned this in very early. It was due on a Wednesday at 11 a.m. and I sent it Monday night. And my agent sent it by 11 a.m. the next day. So technically, one day early. I sent it in one day early. So I made a choice to be more apathetic rather than uh, super vindictive to Ariana because I, the way I interpreted the character was that he was a bartender who had other places to be, other customers to attend to, and he wasn't gonna lose his job, which was a pretty decent gig, just because of serving an underage girl. I think also the outfit helped and kind of pretending as if I was working a bar and, and kind of half listening to her helped a lot. Another interesting thing about this tape was that the way I read it 
changed a lot on the day we actually filmed it and what's in the show. In the show, I'm a little bit more amused with Ariana rather than uh, uh, ignoring her or being a little vindictive. It's better to make a wrong choice than to be wishy-washy about a character. I wanted them to instantly know who I was and who I was was a bartender who was just looking forward to going home at the end of the day. Alrighty, moving on to our next script. So our next show is Shameless. So we're gonna look at the breakdown first. Shameless episode 1105, Slaughter. It's a one hour comedy. We know that about uh, Shameless already. That's something you can look up. You can watch the pilot and understand that it is a dramedy that's about uh, an hour. We have all of our producers, writers, casting directors, directors, uh, when it's working, stuff that you all should know and take in as you're auditioning, make sure you can work those dates, those kind of things. But again, we're gonna skip past that. Role name, Dante. This hipster is the new co-owner of Born Free. Co-star, two lines, one scene. Slate your name, height, and location. Include a full body shot if possible. So, getting into the actual script. Here we go. Interior, born free office, afternoon. Patrick and Dante are seated. Lip knocks on the open door. Brad behind him. Patrick, what's up? Lip, you got my hours? Dante, just a short term thing till we can pull in more revenue. Lip, and you're making us work for minimum wage? How about one or the other? Otherwise, we're both kind of fucked. If Born Free were crushing it, why was it for sale? Place would have been out of business in a year if we hadn't come along. So, uh, you're welcome. Any other feedback? Lip is dumbfounded. Lip, no. Patrick stands up. Cool, cause your ass is fired. Lip punches him in the face. Patrick falls backward, but Lip grabs him by the shirt, then pulls his shirt over his head like in a hockey fight, holds his arms with his left, and while continuing to punch him with his right. Dante, oh my God. Again, co-star. We're just helping out. We don't want to steal the whole scene. One of my employees is coming up and talking to me. That is how I'm going to play it. Very straight, very chill. Okay, let's watch the tape. Hello, my name's Will Westwater and I'm reading for the role of Dante. I am based out of West Hollywood, California and I'm six feet tall. <laughs> What's up? You're cutting my hours? It's just a short-term thing until we can pull in more revenue. And you're making us work for minimum wage? How about one or the other? Otherwise, we're all kind of fucked. If Born Free were crushing it, why was it for sale? Place would have been out of business in a year if we hadn't come along. So, you're welcome. Any other feedback? No? Good. Because your ass is fired. Oh my god, whoa! Stop! Hey, hey, guys, guys! Okay, so there are a couple immediate takeaways from that self-tape. First of all, my slate, it wasn't perfect. You'll notice there was a, a little slipper that I kicked and kind of smiled to the camera about, the slate doesn't have to be perfect, amazing. Then also for a scene like this, when there are multiple characters, you'll notice I, I shift my eye line and what I'll actually do is I'll have my reader, Andy, uh, hold up her hands for different characters oftentimes and I'll kind of look to different people in the room and what that does is it allows you to not only listen, but just take in the room as a whole. And that's really important because I spent most of this tape just listening to what was happening and going on. Also at the very end, you'll notice I ad-libbed a bit from the script, which I think is appropriate seeing as I'm watching someone get punched in the face. I, I think you're allowed to, uh, to kind of take some liberties with that without being too obnoxious. And also the shirt is a little loud that I wore, but they actually chose to use that on the show. So you can kind of just find a style and choose it and lean in and it's better to make a wrong choice and just make a choice. Let's uh, go on to the next tape. We are just flying through these. So this next tape is for an older project. Uh, this one is actually my Midnight Kiss tape, which was my first television show that I booked. It was another co-star spot. On the actual breakdown, it's listed as Untitled Holiday Anthology Series, and an anthology series meaning that each episode is its own contained story. For this script, we actually get a log line for the actual story. For the past seven years, the same group of friends has traveled to Palm Springs for their annual New Year's get-together. Each year, they play a game known as the Midnight Kiss, but as relationships have become strained with secrets, jealousy, and resentment, the group faces another threat when a sadistic killer is thrown into the mix. Trapped in the middle of the desert with no reception or means of escape, friendships are put to the test and truths are revealed as each person fights for their survival. Roll name, Ryan. Male, mid to late 20s, Caucasian, athletic build. He meets his untimely demise in the shower. Full frontal nudity possible, day player. Let's get into the script. 
So first of all, please read the role of Pedro below. The name is changing to Ryan, which is what the name ended up being. Interior, Ryan's apartment, WeHo. Bedroom, night. Ryan, who we met with the group earlier, packs a bag as he holds his phone to his ear. He wears a pair of bright swim trunks, bopping along to the pop song booming from the stereo. He seems bigger now, rippling with muscles from the hours at the gym. A pale blue detoxifying mask is drying on his face. Ryan, representative. He notices something on the floor by the door, a small white envelope. His name is typed on it with an old typewriter font. Curious, he picks it up. Inside, there is a plain white card with a simple message. Never forget me. He turns it over, looking for some clue as to who it came from. rep re He slides off his shorts and pulls on a different pair, turning to check his ass in the mirror. Booking. As he continues to pack, our point of view shifts to the kitchen of this small apartment, watching Ryan through his open bedroom door. The intruder's point of view. We hear the sound of his breath behind the leather mask. Ryan doesn't realize he's being watched. Ryan. Representative. Fuck you, Alaska Airlines. He tosses the phone on his bed and strips off his shorts, disappearing from view as we hear a shower come on. In the shower, a shadow looms in the light from the doorway, but Ryan doesn't notice, his head tilted back as he washes his hair. The intruder steps closer, visible through the sheer plastic shower curtain. The intruder is there, on the other side of the curtain, watching him. When Ryan opens his eyes, what? All right. So, that's our script. Fortunately, it ends at what? Right before uh, Ryan gets his throat cut. So that's all we gotta shoot. Let's watch the tape. Hello, my name is Will Westwater. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm represented by Kerry Macy Talent Agency. I'm six feet tall. I am a citizen of the United States and I am available to work during those dates. Representative. Representative. Booking. Representative. Fuck you, Alaska Airlines. Couple things, first of all, right off the bat, I followed all of their instructions to a T in terms of the slate, the camera work, and how it should be shot. I think putting on a, a Speedo underneath my swim trunks and then being able to actually demonstrate what it would look like for them to film this scene helped a lot with the tape. I don't know what other people's tapes look like, but I also know that uh, with a role like that, it does demand you kind of doing the action. So don't be afraid to, uh, to do that, obviously, if it's appropriate. The good thing about a SAG production is I know that nudity will be, hopefully, if protocols are followed correctly, uh, treated with a lot of respect. They do what's called a closed set. There's all sorts of protocols if you're gonna be nude on a television production. But enough about nudity. I sent it in about 12 hours early. Um, Da, 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 da. I had a strong slate. In the past couple years, I've discovered that, uh, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you should have a nice strong slate, something that's confident, not like Will Westwater, like question mark, or like da, 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 just Will Westwater. For this role, as well as all the other roles, again, I think this is one that I looked the part and that helps a ton. So again, there are so many good tapes that you're gonna send out that you're just not right for, and that's fine. Moving on to our final script. Our final audition script and breakdown is for The Rookie, episode 306, Bad Blood. Uh, this one is on ABC and Hulu right now, which is pretty fun. So again, we have all of our information, casting directors, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Role, man bun. 20s, male, a hipster courier with a man bun. Co-star, the dates, the outside dates. We don't need slates. That rhymes. <laughs> um, let's get into the script. Very short one, this one. So I'm gonna read what's X'd out too because it gives us a little bit more context with the scene. The doorbell rings. Lopez crosses to it, looks through the window to see a courier with a man bun holding a takeout bag. Lopez, did either of you order takeout? Judge Abasi, no. Lopez pulls her weapon as she opens the door. Man bun reacts to the gun. Don't hurt me. Lopez, two man bun. Police, what's in the bag? I don't know, it's a task fast gig. Pick it up from A, drop it off at B. Lopez, and where was point A? 
Man Bun, Car Wash on Melrose. End. Lopez holsters her gun, gloves up, opens the bag, and pulls out a clear takeout soup container filled with blood. So I've been carrying blood this whole time. I am carrying someone's blood, and I have no idea. Okay, so immediately, the most important thing going into this self-tape is that someone is pointing a gun at my character. All sort of candor and all sort of, uh, you know, me telling people to play things smaller and play things realistically. If there's a gun in your face, you would realistically freak out. And that is what I chose to go with, was just, don't shoot, don't shoot. I'm freaking out, man. Let's watch the tape. Don't hurt me. Police, what's in the bag? I don't know, it's it's a task fast gig. Pick it up at A, drop it off at B. And where was point A? Car wash on Melrose. So, that self tape is 13 seconds long. And if we take out my little cards in the beginning and end, it's like 11 or 10 seconds long. So these things don't have to be long. As you can see, I'm freaked out. What I also liked in this tape is that I took in the information as I was freaking out. It was, where, where was that? Uh, where did I pick up this stuff? Uh, the car wash on Melrose. Like you have to come up with this stuff off your head like someone just asked you point blank with a gun in your face. And this was something that we frankly played it pretty much just like this on the actual show. All right, so let's look at the overall and go over a few key takeaways. First of all, all of my tapes were early, be it 12 hours early or a couple days or a weekend early, whatever it is, get those tapes in early because it will significantly increase your chances of booking the part. All right, another thing is all of these scenes were pretty short and they were short enough that I think you can go off book and not even have a script in your hand. Most of the time I would tell you to have a script in your hand just to reference it if you go up on a line. It's better than ruining a whole take of the scene. But again, these scenes are so short, it's just not necessary, it's fine. I followed the instructions on every single tape. If they didn't want a slate, I didn't have a slate. If they did want a slate, I did it how they asked. All that other stuff, so much of this is just following instructions. Another thing, you don't have to ace the test. Katy Perry says that on, on American Idol, but it's so true, it's so true. So much more of it is about making a choice committing to those choices, bringing the character to life, even if all you're given is that you're a courier with a man bun or a bartender. All right, another thing is to read what's X'd out or what's before and after your scene. Oftentimes you'll get little clues as to what the production might be like or what the story is trying to tell you. And a lot of times they will still give you those things even though they're X'd out for context for your scene. The final thing that I want you to take away from this is we are looking at four tapes that I have booked of tens and hundreds of tapes that I've made. Just don't take casting too personally. A lot of it is about finding a role that works for you. Obviously, if I had a shaved head, I couldn't exactly book the role of man bun for a co-star. Lean into what you got uh, and be yourself. A lot of these co-star roles are just about being believable as a person in the universe. So just be a person, first and foremost. It's easier said than done, but I also think that just doing so many auditions, you just get better at it and it will get faster and you'll get better at just doing every part of this from shooting it to interpreting the script to editing it and getting it out on time. It just gets easier. All right, that about does it. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to watch those shows, everybody. Uh, I'll link down below where all of these shows are and how you can find some of my performances. And I really hope this helps. Break legs.